The following maintenance requests and complaints were found on the computer of one Mrs. Doris May, the landlord of the apartment building in 2616 Wayne Boulevard. Following the thorough search of the building by police, Donald Fitzgerald, Unit 411, January 13th. My wife and I moved here for the proximity to the subway and for the cheap rent, but we did not move here so that we wouldn't have a working stove. I do not plan on eating takeout for the remainder of my tenature at this building. I demand maintenance, come down at once, and fix this. Unacceptable. January 24th. And now the refrigerator isn't working. The refrigerator temperature should be at a nice, cool 34 degrees Fahrenheit, but try as we might, Patricia and I have been unable to get it below 36 degrees. So now our milk is spoiled, the cheese is molded, my yogurt is inedible, and my beers are not chilled the way that I'd like it to be when I get home from a long day at work. Once again, I demand a maintenance representative to be here tomorrow to fix this, and not the same man as last time. Jose was rude and did not even apologize for all of this inconvenience when we yelled at him. February 8th. It seems we cannot go a single day without finding something unacceptable about this building. At night, both Patricia and I hear a faint but constant thumping in the walls. What is this? I demand to know why we cannot get some peace and quiet. February 12th. If our Wi-Fi drops out in the middle of Patricia's stories one more time, there will be hell to pay. Get the ISP down here now to increase our speeds. This is insane. February 18th. It appears my previous demand went unheeded. Last night, the thumping was far worse. It sounds like a ghost is living in the walls. Patricia hates ghosts. They are rude and uninvited and do nasty things like slam doors and break china dishes. Get a job, ghosts. Patricia can't sleep in these conditions and I hereby demand an exorcist be brought to the premises to deal with this at once. At once! February 28th. The refrigerator is acting up again. I thought this was fixed. The expiration date on my milk says March 3rd. But it is not March 3rd yet, and already my milk is starting to smell. The temperature is 36 degrees and rising. Unacceptable. March 4th. So today I came home from work. And I go to hang up my coat, and what did I find? A bouquet of flowers from the downstairs office, thanking us for being dream tenants who always pay rent on time? No! I find a cold spot by the bedroom door. The air is of an acceptable, but not ideal temperature throughout our apartment. But by the door to our bedroom, there is a cold spot. This indicates the presence of a spiritual entity. And I do not pay $1,800 a month to be haunted in my own home. Unacceptable. I demand this be dealt with at once. Once! March 4th. Thank you for fixing the stove. But I do not appreciate how Jose made me feel stupid for not knowing about the pilot light feature. I expect he will be reprimanded appropriately. March 11th. Yesterday I had a run-in with Paul Shummerman from down the hall. He was very rude to me when I asked him to stop staring at us venomously whenever we see him. Do you know what he did? He continued to stare as if he wishes harm upon me. I demand to know what will be done about Paul Schumerman. March 14th. So apparently it's not just Paul Schumerman who is bizarre and rude. Rosa Martinez, the elderly foreign woman with maybe five or six remaining teeth from floor three, smiled at us in a very evil looking way that I did not appreciate when I was getting our mail. I demand to know what will be done about Rosa 
Martinez. March 14th. I know I just submitted a request, but it is 1045 and Patricia is unable to sleep because of her nightmares. She says she can see a black figure standing at the end of our bed with red eyes. Not okay. Was someone murdered in this unit? Answers. March 16th. It is unacceptable that on James Madison's birthday, we cannot get the heat to stay on. The temperature is at 40 degrees, much too cold. Fix it. March 17th. Still too cold. And do you mind explaining why all the pictures of Patricia and myself in our hallway were smashed and broken on the ground? I'm calling an exorcist since you refuse to do so, and rent will be reduced by the costs of his services. March 19th. We brought in a local priest who says that, guess what? It is not a ghost. It is a demon. A demon infests my humble abode as I write this. Do you think this is an acceptable way to run an apartment? No. No, it is not. I ask what we can do about this situation. He says we should leave immediately because if we don't, the demon will latch onto us and follow us around. I am not relocating this soon. I asked him to deal with it and he said he can't, that it's beyond his ability to fight and that we need to have the entire building fully blessed. He then scheduled a time tomorrow for he and several other priests, rabbis and pastors to arrive and do a thorough blessing of the building. You will be billed for this. March 19th. Once again, I cannot sleep. Patricia is sleepwalking yet again, except instead of walking down the hall or screaming while still asleep from the kitchen, she is crawling on the ceiling and shouting at me in a very deep voice while her head twists fully around like an owl. I told her to get down at once, and she said, No! She is mine. Excuse me, demon. She is not. I have work in the morning. But what I do not have is patience for this nonsense. Oh, and when I told the demon to let us sleep, it said, F me. F me? I do not appreciate that kind of language. No, sir. Then she began hissing and spitting steaming piles onto the bed and laughing maniacally. My blanket is ruined. I am typing this on my laptop from the couch while she shouts blasphemies from down the hall. If these priests do not fix this issue, we will be reporting you for this mess. March 20th. Do you mind explaining to me why there are herbs and twigs by my door beneath a sign of a pentagram? I expect this is the work of Paul Shimmerman or Rosa Martinez or that nasty Dylan French from Unit 221. You need to do a better job picking tenants for this establishment. March 20th. So I come inside and Patricia's gone. Her absence was not arranged beforehand, and I expect it to be something to do with the demon. This is not okay. When I come home from work, I expect to be able to relax in front of a game show with a beer while my wife knits. But that's not going to be the case today, apparently. There are scratched pentagrams all over the walls, broken lamps, the lights don't work, the refrigerator door is hanging open, thus ruining yet more milk, more milk, gone. And the entire apartment is freezing. I will be doing a thorough search through this building for my wife, updating you on any unpleasantries I encounter from my phone as needed. And when I get back, I expect Jose will have fixed the lights. March 20th. It appears these tenants knew I was coming. I am on floor three. They're all standing outside their homes, watching me silently, unmoving as I walk down the hallway between them, and I believe I smell marijuana from the gay couple's home. Marijuana, an illegal drug that kills millions every year in your building. 
do something about this. I will not have the devil's ganja so close to my abode. If the police conduct a SWAT raid looking for marijuana, we all go to federal prison. All of us. March 20th. I have decided I cannot abide the presence of such a terrifying drug as marijuana anywhere near my person, my wife, or my place of residence. I have alerted the authorities, and they are en route. I apologize if a life sentence for you is inconvenient, but I had no other choice. March 20th. So I asked sweet Mrs. Robinson from 334 where my wife was. She said the basement. The basement! I go down there for laundry. Not my wife. Also, I hereby and henceforth demand that a washer-dryer unit, preferably stacked, although I am willing to negotiate on this, be placed in our unit when this unfortunate episode is concluded. I do not like going into the basement with a basket of dirty laundry. Twice or three times a month because I have to use the stairs, because you can't get the elevator working. March 20th. Why are the lights off on floor two, and where are the priests? All I see are more tenants pointing in unison down the stairs while staring at me like they're in, like they're in some kind of trance. It smells like rotten corpses and old food down here, maybe old lasagna. This was not the case when I left for work this morning, although, to be fair, I simply walked down the stairs and did not venture down this hallway. I also did not notice the arrows painted in blood pointing downstairs. I assume those were put up while I was at work. March 20th. I misspelled the word too, and to be fair, my apologies. March 20th. Where's the front door? I am on floor one, and the front door is missing. I just used it. Instead, there is just a swirling vortex of impenetrable blackness with blood coming out of it and staining the nice carpet. I expect this to be fixed as I have work tomorrow and I need to be there early so I can prepare for a presentation on sales reports for quarter one. Quarter one. March 20th. I have now reached the door to the basement. Why is the word come scratched completely into the wood here? It's unsightly. March 20th. I'm at the top of the basement stairs. Do you know there are demonic voices whispering to people down here, saying, come down the stairs with us. Join us, join us, join us, over and over again. Why do they feel the need to repeat themselves? It is inefficient. March 20th. The voices are now saying that the gospel is a lie, but I said nothing about the first four books of the New Testament. This is an irrelevant red herring, and I demand that we replace these demons with one that can at least stay on topic. I am here for my wife, and not to debate the minutia of Judeo-Christian theology with malevolent spiritual entities who, if I'm being perfectly honest, cannot be trusted on the matter because they clearly have a vested interest in me feeling one way or the other as far as the subject is concerned and thus not being objective. If this keeps up, then I will be taking my laundry to the laundry mat down the block and charter for the foreseeable future, and you will lose out on my business in that department. March 20th. Well, I now see where the priests have gone. Their bones are scattered across the basement, and their collective blood is swirling in a vortex around what appears to be a portal to hell in the center of the basement around which all of the tenants on the ground floor are seated and worshiping. I believe I said very clearly that I did not want hell portals in my place of residence, and no one seemed to indicate this would be a problem when I signed the lease. If I am ever to use these washing and drying machines again, I expect the gateway to Hades to be closed and the place to be cleaned thoroughly before I do so. The smell the smell is terrible, and I also demand that the glowing fiery pentagram on the floor beneath the portal to be doused and cleaned off. It is detrimental to what little decor there is in this basement. March 20th. All the tenants now see me, but as of this typing, 
have yet to respond to my demands to see my wife. They are simply staring at me, and I'm sorry. Where are their eyes? Are eyes not fashionable anymore? How can they see me if they have no eyes? This is impossible, and I demand they cease it at once. They have no respect for the rules of either this apartment or physics itself. This day is ruined. March 20th. My wife, who is quite unkempt and whose hair appears to be unwashed and looks like she is possessed with Satan, which is unacceptable, has joined the group as they speak to me in unison. I'm sorry. When was there a group practice for this performance and why, why was I not invited? It is quite rude to exclude members of your own apartment from such group activities as theater and Latin classes, apparently. And also, I assume this strange deep voice that they're singing in belongs to the towering horned beast that has stepped through the portal and is pointing clawed fingers at me and approaching me slowly in aggressive manners that I do not appreciate. Who is he? Does he pay rent? Do you let anyone enter this building even if they don't pay rent? And if so, then I demand hereby, henceforth, and at once by the power vested in me as a lawful citizen and as a resident of this apartment who is not nor ever has been delinquent on the payment of rent nor any other agreed upon expenses that I...